All right, I want to do yet another breakdown of Song and Kandasmi. This one is from the top eight of the Tallinn World Cup, happened earlier this year. I remember watching this bout live and my mind being blown. I mean, it was just like a back and forth, tightrope match. Uh, amazing performance by both Song Sara and Marie Florence Kandasmi. So let's do another live analysis of this one. Uh, in part two, we looked at kind of how Kandasmi made some adjustments in that game, getting a little bit more proactive in her attack. Um, not waiting for Song to come out, but her taking initiative, right? And that was kind of what led her to the victory there. A little bit of a spoiler on this one, if I remember this one, gets to about 13-13, and Kandasmi pulls away at the he at the very end. But it's a thriller of about end-to-end. -end. Let's fast forward right to where they're about to start, and then let's dive into it. And again, I mentioned this in my previous two videos, but this kind of debunks that myth about the tall FAS, right? That Kandasmi is probably about a foot taller than the five foot four Song Sara. And nevertheless, it's about that Song Sara is always consistently uh, in the running for. So look, now this is a little bit different, right? In the previous bout that we looked at, Kandasmi had been mostly on the push, but here, much more cautious here, uh, you know, to start. Kandasami's trying to pull her when typically her game is more of that kind of offensive push attack uh, kind of game. But you see here, much like we saw at the beginning of that last bout that we watched, we're seeing a little bit of a hesitance for Kandasami to leave the box, but she's going to accelerate there, go for the foot. This is usually around in the last two bouts, the 210 mark around where they've scored um, the first touch. Um, and Kandasami's going to push take that four off position and finish there. Now, um, I mentioned the last time that the women's average is about 20 seconds per touch, but um, for the first touch of about, it's actually at about 50 seconds. So fencers like to, you know, for that first touch, uh, really, really set up the time, push it almost to when a P card's about to be drawn, and then take it from there. Um, so, okay, right now, a little bit of an aggressive kind of interchange in the box right there, and Song is going to do that signature half advantage. She's going to go for that squat attack, but you see Kandasmi holds her ground, lifts the tip up here, and counterattacks uh, before she can really do anything. And you see just that, that signature, very subtle kind of four opposition that Kandasmi took on Song Sara, closing the line. So now, you know, in the first kind of uh, 50 seconds of the bout, we saw kind of a slower tempo footwork uh, pace here. Uh, now they're both very much already like full. Uh, fully all in, moving the feet at a high frequency, high tempo. A little bit of an exchange, and Song Sara manages to escape, kind of binding the blade in four, as Kandasmi kind of gets inside on, uh, gets there on the inside. Now Song Sara is kind of like, all right, uh, she thought that she was going to chase there for a second, but no, she hesitates, and there's that signature half advance. Uh, Kandasmi almost bites there, but she pulls back and kind of aborts the action before it's, uh, before she's in a do or die situation. And this is just, that's a absurd touch. And, no, oh, I'm sorry, she didn't get it, but, oh my gosh, look. Boom, right there. And Song Sura manages to kind of just close that line in that deep four and escape certain death. Uh, now, it's just impressive on, on both fronts there. Both Kandasami's action on the inside and then Song Sura's ability to escape that infighting as well. And we're back to it. There's that preem that um, she had gone for a couple times in the first bout. And what do we have here? Is it a, it's a yellow card on Song Sara. Let's see. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna have to look at that one again because I, I didn't quite see what caused that yellow card. Let's go back here and look again. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody could chime in in the comments about why this is a yellow card, but uh... oh, you know what? I'm a dumb dumb. It's a P yellow because a minute had gone by with no touch. It's a P yellow. I'm a dummy. All right, let's let's keep going. I just wasted time for nothing.
Remember, it's a P yellow because this bout occurred before the 2023 rule change. So again, right here, we know that uh, Song is really at a threat when she's in that two meter zone. Kadassimi manages to pull her out there. Right, Song comes out, accelerates, does a slow advance to an accelerated lunge, and Kadassimi lifts a tip. And again, she's ready for that counter. Again, it's the second time that she's kind of drawn out that attack from Sierra Song and managed that counter. So. Here again, we're playing in the box. There's that extension from Song, quick half advance. And then now a little bit of a feint over and under the guard. And you see, this is kind of what she does so well, right? She'll do that really low feint, get the extension, and do this second intention parry repost. And at this point, 10, ten seconds remain. Song says, all right, let me back away here, uh, regroup, and figure out things from there. So again, you know, in terms of tactics, right, um, so far in the first period, we're seeing more of kind of the responsive actions from Kandasami that in the first bout that they had together, it didn't work out well for her, right? Song Sarah was able to kind of go in for that flesh and hit her a couple times when she was hesitating in the two meter zone. And now at this point, what we're seeing so far from Kandasami is actually what didn't work in the first bout is working now. She's kind of pushing uh, Song Sarah to the back of the two meter zone or close to the back of the three meter zone uh, creating that pressure, drawing out the attack, and getting the counterattack. That seems to be what's working so far for her. Um, now, Song Sera, what isn't working is, you know, we're not really seeing that confidence in her finishes, right? We haven't seen a single one of her really solid flushes come out that seem to work pretty well in the first two bouts. It's kind of more just uh, these two tempo advanced lunges that kandasami has been lifting the tip up ready for the counterattack on. So here we go. Now we're at the beginning of the second period. And again, of course, 3-1, um, two-touch lead with six minutes left defense is really uh, nothing to be, be afraid of at all here. Um, and so we're back to it. And side note, I really like those Korean uniforms, just the way that the red blends into the blue with the lettering. I mean, it's chef's kiss. I love it. And so we're back to it now. Kandasami kind of slower uh, on the feet than, than she usually is. But, you know, we talked about this before. She could turn it up really, really quickly if she needs to. And looks like Song Sera kind of just takes a, let's see, who kind of initiates the attack. Kind of both there. And then they just kind of sneak inside and she manages to kind of pop Kandasami with an unforeseen touch. And we're moving again. One touch lead. A little faint. A little bit of a six uh, invitation kind of part of her game there and oh my god the timing on that was just so good <laughs> Song Sera picks her foot up and Kandasami goes down to the leg before she can even look before the front foot she can hit, hit the ground like she takes a parry and she's already got past her parry the timing on that is just so so good that's such a special part of Kandasami's game and again uh, Song Sera pushes a little aggressively picks her hand up too high and looks like Kandasami snipes her under the hand yeah that's just two in a row Phenomenal touches from Kanasami. I'm like fired up even watching this. So now they're just like, like now Song Sera is putting that pressure on like she hates her. And, you know, it's like unrelenting. You see, she's not even breaking distance. She's moving forward. The intensity of this is great. And boom, there's that signature flesh that I'm talking about, right? We didn't see that. And she points to her coach like, yeah, I think he told her maybe to do that. Um, doesn't quite hit it in perfect timing, but it seems to work. And she manages to sneak it in. Regardless, so now two touch lead and Kandasami is going back on the push. Uh, Song Sera catches her on her step four, but Kandasami, the length of her arm, she manages to counterattack and manage a double there. So pretty good. And back to it now. You saw right before the uh, they fenced. Uh, oh, that was subtle, but you saw right before they said on guard ready fence, Kandasami shifted her angle to the outside of the strip. Let's watch this again. And again, you know we're talking about. So let's see here. All right, watch right before they're about to fence. Kandasami shifts her angle to the outside. There it is, see? Now she's in pretty good position here for that outside angle, and she takes a deep four opposition and surprises Song Sera. Angle changes, really, really important. Again, we talked about this in Clément Schreffer's book, How to Fence Epe, the Fantastic Four Method. You want to have that outside angle on the lefty. It's ideal. You don't want to be inside of their guard where they have a much more favorable angle to the outside of your arm. Uh, and your body as well. So now, Kandasami is kind of moving forward with confidence and maybe attacks from a little bit out of distance there. Not enough preparation in Sangsara. 
is ready for that counterattack. Back to it. And there's that subtle high low 6 8 invitation over the guard. Again, a little bit too rushed from Kandasami there in the box. Lack of preparation there. And she starts that attack, and Song Sorora just lifts her tip up. Counter attacks over the guard. Back to and now we're at a one touch lead. All of a sudden, all the more reason, folks, that, you know, even when you get the confidence, you don't want to be rushing, right? So now Kandasami is changing her footwork up a little bit, right? You see her getting more of a deep half advance than before. It was kind of more of this, uh, you know, full advance and in, in the rhythm with her feet. And again, picks her foot up and Sangsura attacks into the preparation before her front foot hits the ground. Really, really nice one there. Just watch. Look, she gets her off balance, right? And that moment that she steps forward, she goes for attack and preparation, explosive, and boom, it's all of a sudden a tie score, mostly because of those two rushed actions from Kandasami that she had starting off in this period. And again, she pushes, and look, now we're kind of getting rapid fire touches. Boom, 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 boom. And that's, um, you know, that's a dangerous game to play against Song Sirai. You really, really got to set those touches up with her because she's such a water bug with her fencing. And now we've got a minute left and we're in the box. High low, Kandasami is kind of doing this rhythmic half advance and looks like she finds the parry six there. Bum, 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 bum. So she kind of takes it, misses, Sangsaro makes a continuation, she closes the line, finishes with parry six repost. And Kandasami's pushing there. Sangsara launches into the preparation there. Uh, really, that was that was nice. Like Connor standing up a little bit there, um, but Kandasami again manages that double. And yeah, now we're just like a lot of kind of saber actions in the box, right? They're they're doing a little bit. They're going forward and you know kind of counter attacks slash attacks and prep. A lot happening in the box here compared to the last two bouts. And you see, when you make a feint like Sangsara does, you want to make sure that it's a threat, right? Every time she drops her, her tip under the guard, it's sudden, it's in distance, it's a legitimate threat, and there's a lot of directions that she, she can go for that. But she squats down. As she gets up, she gets a little bit too high, picks up the arm. Kandasami manages to snipe her, again, under the hand. Really, really nice touch. I mean, the timing on Kandasami in this bout has been spot on in terms of timing and choosing when to attack compared to the other ones. And there's that aggressive push from Sangsara. She's going to back away, let this go to the one minute break again. All right, so let's go to the third now. And what's going to happen here? And, you know, one thing about Kandasami's on guard is it's, uh, I don't know if any of you read um, the Epe book by the anonymous Eurasian, but, you know, he talked about how a lot of uh, modern Epe fencers, especially the Hungarians, are moving more towards um, the pivoted back foot uh, on the on guard. So it's not your traditional kind of um, uh, 90 degree angle on guard. You see her, her back foot is kind of pivoted um, at a at a unorthodox angle, but that's becoming more and more common as anonymous Eurasian pointed out in his book. Now we're at a two touch lead and Kandasami is kind of pushing, goes for the half advance and oh my god, that's just mean. On that step forward, right? There's that feint above the guard and then she accelerates to the foot and she gets so low in that lunge because she's such a freak athlete that it's really hard to find the counter attack there but she manages that and it's very 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 hard to hit the, uh, the French in the feet. Uh, it's just not something that you see a lot of. Uh, in men's or women's with the French getting hit in the foot. So there's kind of a flick over the guard from Kandasami, but she doesn't really like what she sees. She backs away at this point. And Song Sura, you know, just the feints. You can see a little flinch from Kandasami almost every time that Song Sura makes that feint. 
and it's kind of like a, uh, a jab to the head, right? When you're when you're watching boxing, it's setting up everything else, and that's what she's doing really well. This bout, um, kind of similar to the first bout that we watched, as she's making Kandasmi much more hesitant to attack than the bout that we analyzed yesterday, right? So now 13-12, all of a sudden. This uh, three-touch lead that was going into this period is now just one touch with two minutes remaining. And boom, just before Kandasami can even push her, again, this is what Song Sura has done really, really well, is going into the preparation with confidence before Song Sura can bully her to the back of the two-meter zone. And she wants to do a weapon swap. We're at 13-13 now. So how is Kandasami going to pull ahead here? Because... We've seen Song Sura, you know, have this kind of streak where all of a sudden she's going back to the actions with confidence that seemed to work really, really well in the last couple of bouts. And now we're at 13-13. So, Gnasmi changes weapons, kind of breaking the momentum, right? It's a good thing to do. Um, you know, if you're ever feeling your opponent kind of coming back on you, you know, take that, that uh, 30, 45 seconds it's going to take to swap your weapon and check your socks and, you know, kill your opponent's momentum and hopefully it'll break their focus. And we're back to it now. Kandasami is moving. Kind of searching for the blade. Doesn't find it there. Makes a threat over the guard, but she pulls back. She probably could have gotten that and bam. Let's see what happens here. They get in a little infighting tussle, and she takes Supreme Repost, and... Eh, yeah, I would probably say that's Cora Core to avoid the touch. Let's see what the referee says here. Um, because it looks like right here she kind of does this little extra step in. Again, Cora Core to avoid the touch is about intent, and it looked like from there the intent was very much to cause a Cora Core... Um, to cause the halt, but again, you know, if you're kind of looking for gamesmanship here, right, and you are at a 13-13 bound in a critical point, having that kind of core core to avoid the touch is not the worst thing in the world, and it's better to get a yellow card there, as she just did, and yeah, the referee awards the yellow touch there. Um, it's better to get a yellow card there in a situation like that than all of a sudden be down 14-13, so smart gamesmanship there by Song Sura. And we're back to it. So it looks like here what uh, Kandasmi is trying to do with her footwork is she's going more conservative. Looks like she's trying to bait Song Sura there, threatened to the guard. It looks like she wants her attack to come out, and sure enough it does. She manages to do a counterattack and four with opposition there. Let's see if that, she does close the line in four. Yeah, very, very subtle, but boom, right at the last second, closing her out with that counterattack and four opposition there. And now we're at 14-13, one minute, 18 seconds remaining. And boom, right into the preparation on Song Sura's step forward. She launches that direct lunge, single tempo into the preparation. Just really, really good timing there. You see on that moment that Song Sura steps forward with that half advance she's into the preparation. This is another just great classic from these two, and again, you can see why I'm so thrilled watching these two fence, because it's just beautiful stuff whenever they get together. Thank you for watching.